About seven months ago, I realized that I was cheating on my SDBXW. I experienced every bit of anguish, pain, denial, and pick-me attempts. I had a protracted period of severe depression. I was a complete wreck, but I never addressed her. I guess she just didn't care, or at least that's what I assumed approximately two plus or minus three months ago, so she must have known that I knew. I was simply over everything, the marriage, her, and both of them. Simply put, I had lost interest. I ended the relationship entirely and began getting ready for my impending divorce and new life. I tried not to talk to my wife. When she was home, I made an effort to keep out of the house. I would not converse with you. I would only respond with yes, no, maybe, or I don't know when she asked me a question. I even kept the bills from the divorce lawyer in plain sight. She must have realized I was getting a checkup and getting ready for divorce. I was even asked about it by kids. They could see what was happening as well. That we both love you speech was something I even did. It's not your fault. Sometimes grown-ups can't be together anymore, and so on. My spouse must have overheard me speaking to the children because she was in the room. She made no remarks or protests. Her quiet was my sign of approval. In any case, I ran into a girl I knew in school a few days ago before I even met my wife. There was always a tension, a certain electricity between us. We would constantly make out and appear flirtatious, but we never took any concrete action. She reminds me of Monica Beluxi. Therefore, let's call her Monica. Monica and her family relocated before I had the courage to take concrete action. For a long while, I felt bad about it, but I was naive, bashful, and young. It's been a while since I've thought about Monica. I haven't really seen her in years. However, the moment we met, the tension between us was evident, even more so than I had remembered, and we were able to communicate with ease. She made a genuine date request. I used my SDBXW to convey the matter to her. I informed her that before I started dating, I wanted to be legally separated. I refused to be unfaithful. Monica acknowledged that. She provided me her phone number and instructed me to call her as soon as I had completed my tasks. She informed me that she had never been married and expressed her excitement at reconnecting with me. I couldn't have been, ah, uh, happier. I was inspired by the incident to confront my wife and begin the formal process of separation and divorce. When I got home and sat down to wait for my wife, I was overjoyed. When I told her we had to chat and asked her to sit down, I was literally smiling like a crazy person. I informed her that I had long been aware of her infidelity. I informed her that I thought she knew, given that I had been absent from our relationship for the previous three or so months. She seemed unaffected by my lack of concern. I told her that I wanted to go on with my life and start dating. Her response was completely unexpected when I said, All taken into consideration, it's time for us to get divorced, don't you agree? At the end of my speech, she broke down in tears. And not just your average tears, like a frantic, heartbreaking sound. That is unlike anything I have ever heard. She was blabbering about why the affair didn't matter and asking for more opportunities. If we tried therapy, etc., we could make this better. I was taken aback. I assumed she would be relieved if I told her she could go be with this guy guilt-free. It's clear that she values him more than her family. Why did you go with him in the first place if he wasn't? She must have realized that this would ruin us. It is impossible for her to be that foolish, is it? I informed her that if she felt that our marriage or family needed to be fixed, now would have been the perfect moment to do so seven months prior before her affair. It's too late now. It's irreparably damaged. I didn't believe that our marriage was having any issues. I'm not a mind reader and she didn't speak to me. Whatever it was, I was unable to remedy it. She clearly felt that something was missing or incorrect ever since she began her romance with the other gentleman. Something that was so flawed that speaking with me wouldn't help to fix. She had to be so incompetent or so flawed that she could tolerate our kids growing up in a dysfunctional household. Why not do it, if not? For the past seven months, I have calmly and clearly conveyed that there is no way for her to fix this guy, and there is no way to undo the anguish she has caused me. The suffering she inflicted led me to this place where I'm essentially apathetic towards her. In fact, I kind of despise her. All I'm doing is trying to be kind so that we can eventually co-parent our kids. I told her I didn't think she was ever interested in me. Nobody who had even the slightest compassion for another person would subject them to such suffering. They wouldn't betray them in the manner in which she had. 
her behaviors clearly show that she doesn't love me, so her declaration of love is meaningless and untrustworthy. At this she got absolutely nonsensical. I was unable to understand a word she said. It's all a confused chaos. Sincerely, I'm going to take care of her, so in the end I had to call her sister. When her sister arrived, I told her what was going on and she carried her away. I was so relieved when they left. I could breathe at last. Life. Not having done so in seven months. Here. I'm not sure what I'm looking for. She must have been aware that this would occur. It must have been her desire. She can't be so naive to believe that her actions and the decisions she took would lead to anything other than a broken family and divorce. Our marriage was wonderful until she began her affair, even though she is brilliant and gorgeous. I acknowledge that things in life change. I've moved on from it now. She's acting as though she loves me and wants to stay married and start a family. What possible reason could she have for putting herself through this much drama right now? What would she stand to gain? She couldn't really have expected us to try to make amends at this time, could she? It has to be a ruse of some sort, I just can't seem to identify it. I have a ton of proof that she cheated. This would entail nothing at all for her in terms of alimony because I live in a European nation. Is that the case? Is she worried that I'll expose her? Is that the case? Is she trying to make me feel bad so I won't tell anyone about what she did? Given that her AP is married, she might be afraid that I will harm his spouse. I simply cannot comprehend it. Either way, I had to get this off my mind. I thought typing everything down would help things make more sense, but no. I'm still as bewildered as I was when I first started this tirade. Update. First of all, I would want to thank everyone. It's been quite demanding in numerous aspects. Although I haven't had time to respond to everyone, I have made an effort to read everything. I didn't get much sleep the three days following my talk with my SDBXW. Actually, while reading messages on my computer, I passed out. The following morning, I awoke with a much clearer head and an unusual keyboard. Pattern on my face. I made lists of arguments for and against the main ideas. I tacked a number of documents to the wall. Our kids. How to behave when meeting the wife. My marriage. Monica. Questions to ask my wife and so on were the headlines I created for each of them. I will only go over a few of the key issues because the entire document would take too much space to post here. My intention was to ascertain which fundamental values I wish to uphold and which priorities I should give priority to. I then went over each of those and assessed what would be a significant outcome in the event that I made any progress, as well as whether or not I would be able to truly accomplish something worthwhile from it. I put the kids first when it comes to priorities. I'll work harder to support them in overcoming this, offering family and individual counseling. I'll plan outings, increase our quality time, and create new memories. To assist them get through this and shower them with love, I will enlist the support of the rest of the family as well. Additionally, I'll speak with their coaches, instructors, etc. I want to guarantee that their network of support is both immediate and widespread. In addition to scheduling the kids' DNA tests, I received a STI test. I'm uncomfortable even contemplating that they might not be mine, but I have to be certain for their benefit. Maybe they should be aware of some medical history if they are not mine. What happens if, as they get older, they desire to get in touch with their real father? If I don't take action right away to make sure, how will people see me? I'm hoping they're mine, and I won't stop worrying until I have confirmation. They came to us after speaking with their therapists alone, and we meticulously went over everything while allowing them to ask as many questions as they wanted. I tell them repeatedly that they are welcome to come to me with anything. Their father is me. I will always, always be there for them, no matter what, because I love them more than anything. Regarding my marriage, I've concluded that I will never be able to put my trust in my wife again. It is impossible to have a relationship without trust. I also realized that I'm not in love with my wife. I don't like the person she's turned into. A huge portion of me was consumed by my love for her, but the affair killed that. It completely altered my opinion of her. Perhaps I could come to love her once more, but that would need desire on my part. To be honest, I don't want to. It would be better to put an end to it and move on. I wish to end this marriage now. I'm not interested in our romance. She is not what I desire. The part of me that adored her and used to be filled with unending delight and joy when I thought about her is now filled with fear and painful memories. 
Actually, I'm currently really uncomfortable with the idea of being associated with her. I believe that a divorce is inevitable, thus I want to finalize it as soon as feasible. I spoke with Monica quite a bit. Based on the comments I had seen on Reddit, I was a little worried. Perhaps it wasn't the best idea to start dating right away. Furthermore, I didn't want to include her in my issue. And let's be honest, my life right now is a complete mess. She wasn't convinced. She said, life is messy. Let's see how we handle it together while we're dating. I discovered why she was never married. In actuality, she was engaged. Nearly five years ago, her fiancé sadly passed away in a workplace accident. She was heartbroken by this and had not been able to connect with anyone despite going on a few dates after. As far as she was concerned, life was too short not to seize opportunities when they presented themselves. I clarified that I wish to wait, to begin anything until the divorce is finalized. I want to stay married even though I don't want to cheat. Monica acknowledges that. She respected that and agreed. We won't take any action right away after it becomes official. I'm attracted to Monica so much I will not speak with her again until my legal separation is finalized, because I consider this phone call to be somewhat of an emotional affair. We decided that when I was ready, I would organize my affairs, get in touch with her, and we would discuss our options. I jotted down certain values I wanted to live by when it came to organizing the meeting with my wife. In our meeting, I would do all in my power to be that man, the man I was before everything. I made the decision to remain composed. I would do my hardest not to be harsh. I would remember that we were trying to move on with our lives with this chat. To be able to co-parent as effectively as possible for our children was the goal. Nevertheless, I had a list of questions ready to try to find out why she was having this affair and what she was considering doing next. There was no way I was going to lie. I refused to give her false optimism that they could work things out so they could obtain a post-nuptial agreement or other benefits from the divorce. I've made the decision to behave in a fair manner. I'll give her an equal share of all assets. Half and half will be our custody split. I won't look up to her, despite the horrible things she has done to me. I'm going to do action that I can be proud of 20 years from now. I detest her for what she did to me, to us, and to our kids, but I also cherish the memories of our happy moments spent together, as well as the kids we co-created and reared. Going ahead, I'll make an effort to remember her this way, rather than her infidelity. I must eventually forgive her in order to move on since I am unable to have hatred in my heart. I believe our marriage was going great till she cheated. Every day we would make love. We had a great deal of time together. We didn't fight that much. We freely made sacrifices for one another. Actually, until I found out about her cheating, I was really upfront with her. I thought she was honest with me too, but her behavior now indicates otherwise. Such sorrow. Arrived so I went to visit her. I had been advised by her sister that she was not well. She was not in error. My bloated cheeks, unkempt hair, and bloodshot eyes made my Stevie XW seem terrible. She appeared significantly smaller than I recall, as though she had collapsed into herself. She probably hasn't eaten or slept much this week. My wife was trembling nearly uncontrollably as we all sat down. I was unexpectedly at ease. Though not as a devoted husband, I felt for her obvious anguish. I sympathized with her suffering in the same way that I would with a movie star if I were in it. To be honest, I have no idea how to describe the emotion. It proved that I most likely no longer love her. I merely sat there and waited for her to gather the courage to say something. She would begin multiple times before sobbing uncontrollably. I can tell by watching her that this is not an act. She has cried a lot in the past, but never to this extent. I suppose people can pretend to cry, but I doubt anyone can pretend to look like they've been crying uncontrollably for a week, complete with heartbreaking cries and enormous snot bubbles. It was like a flood breaking when she spoke at last. Every other syllable, she expressed regret. She didn't attempt to defend herself or point the finger at me, which surprised me. Her sister would occasionally chastise her and wept too. It also became out that her sister had told her this was what was going to happen. It seems that's how her sister's fiancé ended up losing him a year ago. I was unaware that my wife had a kind of midlife crisis as a result of her sister's infidelity. She began to fantasize about cheating frequently. Ultimately, it appears that she couldn't help herself when she became enamored with the guy and developed a crush on him. 
She never thought anyone would be harmed or that I would find out. It was an entirely self-serving action. It seems that she was content in our union. She told herself that if I saw how pleased she was, I would definitely back her decision and that she deserved this brief affair. She told herself at the time that this affair will end, and our family would resume its happily ever after. She was unaware that I had discovered this and it wasn't until I began to check out that she began to wonder what was going on. She split up with the AP, I found out, roughly 1.5 months ago. The initial excitement had begun to fade. She had blocked him when she handed me her phone to check. Messages going back 1.5 months began to arrive when I unblocked him. Until I sat her down, I hadn't exhibited any interest in being involved with her, despite her attempts to re-engage me in our marriage. She was certain that we would be able to work things out and come out stronger than before. When I addressed her, she realized that this was probably the last time we would speak to each other. She felt as though everything had come to her suddenly. I made an effort to question her, mostly about what in her view gave her the authority to harm our children and us in this way. Essentially, she is acting solely out of selfishness. I came to the realization that as many of you have already mentioned, I will never get the answers I'm seeking for. Since there is no justification for cheating, I will never receive a satisfactory response. I did, however, find some strange sort of closure. I had the opportunity to tell her how much she had harmed me and how much agony she had brought about. I persuaded her to acknowledge that our marriage is shattered and that our kids will grow up in a broken household because of her fault. I felt a strange kind of tranquilly because of this. She'd been reading all she could get her hands on for mending an affair-related damaged marriage. She had everything ready for me, including a signed copy of her comprehensive confession and timetable. I simply handed it to my attorney. I haven't read it. She pleaded for a second chance over and over. She stated she would do anything. I expressed my lack of belief in her. To be honest, I didn't think any of her statements. It's not that I trust her. What could she do to make things right? She asked me. It broke, I told her. How can she expect me to give her the answer if she doesn't know? If she were in my position, how would she respond? I asked. If anything, there was some back and forth on these kinds of questions for a time. At the end, she admitted, she probably wouldn't have forgiven this either if the roles had been reversed. I informed her that I had taken a STI test and that I would be testing the children's DNA. When she heard this, she broke down totally and cried for almost 20 minutes. She argued that this was the only instance in which she had ever acted inappropriately or cheated. After some back and forth, she finally agreed that there was no reason for me to believe her and that she would probably act the same way if she were in my position. She said she didn't know when I asked if AP's wife was aware. She admitted that she had a right to know. Should I tell her? Or should she tell her? I asked her. Whether she informed her, she asked whether I would think about getting back together or going to marriage counseling. I told her no, but I also said that it would give her back some small measure of my respect. She said she would tell everyone, including the wife of the AP. She would disclose everything to HR as well. I told her once more that I didn't truly believe her. She promised that even if it took the rest of her life to get back together with me, she would never be with anyone else. Even though I didn't believe her, I remained silent. This was becoming a bit of a cliché. She promised me a one-sided, transparent marriage, complete communication access, and round-the-clock availability. I informed her that I was waiting since I didn't want to cheat after speaking with Monica. Being in an open relationship is not what I desire. If we did, it would hurt her, and I don't want to harm anyone the way she hurt me. I also don't want to be her jailer. An unhealthy relationship can't be built on constant surveillance and suspicion. Intimacy without a deeper connection also piques my curiosity no matter what. I don't think it's worth having sex just for the sake of having sex. I can take care of the mechanical release on my own if I need it. For that I don't require a companion. By this time we were all worn out. My wife had been crying for more than five hours, ranging from really awful to frightening for the most part of the outing. This was resolved. There was no need for us to pursue it further. I made it quite plain to her that my love for her had ended. She had changed into a person I couldn't recognize. She had caused the death of her family, and I would follow through with the divorce. I informed her that she was unable to reverse the actions she had taken, 
and that the only option to avert this outcome would have been to cease the affair seven months prior. I didn't want her back, and I didn't want our marriage to return. I didn't want any more suffering. I recommended that we break up for a bit in order to gain some perspective and space. I told her I was done thinking about it and that I had already filed. I don't even want to see her past the point where we can begin family therapy in order to co-parent. It hurt so much to tell her this. When I got up to leave, she let out a loud, almost exploding no, and started to reach for me, but she went out. She was crying hard and saying, no, 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 please, no, please, no. I was able to grab her before she fell to the ground. I waited to find out if she would be all right after driving her and her sister to the emergency room. Estebex W has been telling everyone what she has done for the past two nights. This morning, the AP's wife gave me a call to confirm that what my wife had told her was accurate. I emailed her copies of a few of the proof. I recently found out she ejected her husband. She'd like to meet and see more of the proof. She's been having suspicions for a while, but nothing concrete has come to light. I propose that we have supper together tomorrow. She requested if we could talk on the phone because she needed to talk. I'm not sure if I'm up to that at this time. Maybe later, I told her. Admittedly, I feel like a piece of sheet. I've had trouble falling asleep. My resolve is beginning to crumble. While it's incredibly difficult, I know I must maintain my strength. Why am I feeling so bad? Why do I feel that I should attempt to make this right? For a while, we might be able to fool ourselves, but in the long run, it probably won't work. I've been getting calls from some of her friends and relatives criticizing and swearing at me. They believe that I ought to give her another chance. But I'm thinking, why prolong the suffering? It's better to put an end to it so we can begin to mend and start afresh. That concludes our discussion. Nothing noteworthy. No retaliation. Absent resolve. Not at all peaceful. No happily ever after. Only more suffering for everyone. I am currently at a really dark place in my head. To be really honest, I have no idea what to do.